Good afternoon, SHS. Welcome to the Salem Show from our Washington County Community Foundation Studios at Salem High School. I'm your host, Sydney Brown. And I'm your other host, Kendall Hickey. Welcome back from fall break, SHS, and to our tremendous third episode. Sydney, did you make a snowman? What? You know, because all the snow we got this past Tuesday? I think you're exaggerating a bit on how much snow we got. Really? Um, yeah. Well, in that case, how about we jump right into the announcements? Alrighty, let's get to it. Today is an e-learning day. Prosser students will have transportation provided to attend at the regularly scheduled depart departure times for Prosser classes. All students will have assignments posted on Google Classroom and assignments are to be completed by 3 p.m. on Friday, October 21st. Attention seniors, if you are still needing to place your cap and gown orders, you will need to order online at jostens.com. See Mrs. Gramlin at the bookstore if you have any questions on ordering. Salem High School 10th and 11th graders will be taking the PSAT on Tuesday, October 25th. The Junior A and Prosser bus will not run that day. Senior bus will run as scheduled. Candy Grams, Mrs. Sebastian's class will be selling candy bags to be delivered during SRT on Halloween. Fill out the Google form and give $1 to Mrs. Sebastian in room 221. Send a yummy treat to your friend, favorite teacher, or significant other. Attention upperclassmen, the SAT will be given at SHS on November 5th. There's an ACT test given at SHS on October 22nd, tomorrow. Lions Unified will have their Halloween meeting in the presentation room during SRT on Monday. Only members who have paid their $3 dues are allowed to attend. See Mrs. Phipps in room 16 to pay. Good luck to the Marching Lions tomorrow as they will be competing at State at Franklin Central High School. Roll on. Remember, vending machines are off limits during school hours. If you need a snack, please go to the vending machines before the start of school or after the school day has let out. And just your yearly reminder about your Chromebook. Make sure when the Chromebook gets down to 5%, charge it. Shut down your Chromebook to charge it. This will eliminate most issues in charging Chromebooks. Winter is coming, unfortunately, so be careful with your Chromebook. Make sure you're not leaving your Chromebook out in the cold because this may harm the screen or interfere with connections. Now let's head over to Davin for the weather. Please, let us, please tell us that we won't see any more of the snow for a while. Thanks, Kendall and Sydney. Well, I can tell you that the weather next week will be better, but you will need an umbrella. So let's get to it. This Friday, we'll have a high of 70 and a low of 41. It'll be partially cloudy. Saturday, we'll have a high of 74 and a low of 49. It'll be sunny. Sunday, we'll have a high of 76 and a low of 50. It'll also be sunny. Now this Monday, We'll have a high of 73 and a low of 50. It'll be partially cloudy. It's also National Baloney Day. Tuesday, we'll have a high of 71 and a low of 48. It'll be partially cloudy. Wednesday, we'll have a high of 56 and a low of 46. Thursday, we'll have a high of 60 and a low of 39. It'll be rainy both days, so bring an umbrella. It's also National Bear Day on Thursday. Friday, we'll have a high of 63 and a low of 44. It'll be partially cloudy. Now let's pause for a short commercial break and head over to the Community News with Elaine. Why should I start a fund in the Foundation? When you start a fund in the Community Foundation, your values will continue in the community for generations to come while benefiting your favorite causes. Giving through the Foundation allows flexibility in charitable giving, and your generosity will continue to benefit the causes and organizations you care about most forever. Thanks, Davern, for the weather forecast, and let's keep the 70-degree weather around longer. So this week, for the Community News, we had a chance to sit down and talk to some of our longtime businesses here in Salem. This week, we focused on Peerless Gear and what they produce, and we got a behind-the-scenes look at how their product is made. We are here at Peerless Gear on the south side of Salem. They have been in business for over 75 years, and we are talking with David Hypes and Jennifer Nicholson. Thank you for meeting with me today. So for those that don't know, what does Peerless Gear manufacture? So we manufacture shafts, gearboxes, gear train, transmissions for the lawn and garden industry. Since your company has been around for quite some time, how has your organization changed over time? We've had some different ownership. Um, started in 1945 in Ohio. Uh, moved here from Clinton, Michigan in about 1981. Has been Tecumseh Power, Tecumseh Products, as well as Peerless Gear, which we are now named. I guess it's it's changing with the recent outbreak of COVID, et cetera. You know, we've had to make some rules 
um, changes with how we hire people, how we retain people, because it has played an impact on everybody throughout the world. Um, you know, with COVID, we have to allow people to be off through different um, regulations and reasons. So that has definitely made some changes in our facility within the last three years, for sure. For sure. Also, I might add that supply chain shortages right now is a big thing in manufacturing. Um, I think all manufacturing companies are experiencing this right now. Um, so delays and getting parts timely. How has automation and robotics impacted the manufacturing process within your organization? So as we are an older company, we are, we are automating more and more all the time. Um, we've just bought some new machinery that is more automated than what we normally have. We have robots to apply sealants onto the transmissions. And, uh, but as of right now, our automation is, is fairly limited in this factory. Where are your clients located? Really worldwide. Um, we have customers in Europe. We have customers in Canada, a little bit everywhere throughout the world. And customers in the U.S. And in the U.S., yes, thank you. Uh, what other sectors or companies does your company support? So a lot of our business is in the lawn and garden industry, um, but as well we have irrigation, um, different types of transportation equipment that is off-road manufacturers as well. Um, if someone wanted to work here, what's the most important characteristics that you look for in a potential employee? Well, depending on the position, um, we look for education levels. Um, we look, Right now we're looking for people that will show up, uh, show up timely. Um, so. If, you, if it's an hourly position, uh, the rules are a little bit different for salary. Uh, we do recall some positions do require uh, four year bachelor degrees, etc. So, because you have all these uh, moving parts, what would be the procedure if one of your machines were to break? Okay, so we have a maintenance department here. So, normally we will get with our maintenance department first. They'll take a look, see if they can figure out what's going on with the machine. If it's electrical, we may outsource to an electrical company out of you know Jeffersonville, New Albany, Louisville. If it's a specific machine, um, say index, trob, something to that effect, we'll call the manufacturer of the machine and get them to come in and look at it. We we have that from time to time. We have you know so, some older machinery in this factory, so we have to rely on some outside sources as well as our own internal. People. Thank you for your time with me today. This is SLNN reporter Elaine Houchin. Back to you at the studio. We would like to thank David Hypes and Jennifer Nicholson for sitting down with us and giving us a tour of their facility. On the next show, we will be chatting with Doug James from GKN. Stay tuned. Now let's head over to Braden for Sports Minute. Thanks, Elaine. Now let's get into sports from the Hoosier Upland Sports Desk. The Lions had their senior night two weeks ago, and unfortunately, the Lions lost to Charlestown 33-6. The seniors must have been disappointed, but it didn't help when they played West Washington last week and lost 14-7. Wish them luck this Friday as they play Charlestown again in the first round of IHSAA sectionals first round. In a very emotional day for our volleyball players, they were up against Scottsburg for their IHSAA sectionals at Madison, and unfortunately, they lost 0-3, and that ended their season. Good luck to Lainey Roberts as she runs at Eagle Park in the Brown County Semi-State Cross Country Meet tomorrow at a chance to go to state. The top 10 individuals from non-advancing teams and the first six qualifying teams from each semi-state shall advance to the state finals. This week is also the first week of the girls basketball season. The first game will be at Seymour November 5th. The JV tips off at 6 p.m. and the varsity will follow. Good luck this season, ladies. When it comes to Indiana sports, you can be really good or pretty bad as Indiana football is. They became the first D1 football program to reach 700 losses. However, Indiana soccer was the fastest D1 program to get 100 wins. All of this happened on the same day. That's a very interesting day for sports fans in Indiana. The NFL had some interesting games this week, including an amazing matchup with the Chiefs and the Bills. If you were listening to Football Friday two weeks ago, you would know that I predicted the Chiefs would win, partially because I really wanted to win my fantasy game, and I was right on the money if money didn't exist, because the Bills won 24-20. to It is safe to say I didn't win this week. The Cowboys were up against the Eagles right after the Chiefs and Bills game, and this was set to be a good game. The Cowboys were on a four-game winning streak with their backup quarterback as the Eagles were going undefeated. They say all good things come to an end, 
and every Cowboy fan found that out when they lost against the Eagles 26-17. to Hockey fans rejoice as the return of the NHL is upon us. Starting off the season, we had the Sharks and the Predators. Personally, I thought the Sharks would win, but I guess I'm bad at guessing because they definitely didn't. The Predators put up four while the Sharks only put one in. This Monday had some good games, including the Rangers versus the Ducks. And this was a fantastic game for Rangers fans as they were scoring left and right. It's a pretty high score game, and the Rangers won 6-4. to four. The Bruins took, a 20, took the lead 21 seconds into the game against the Panthers and then didn't score again for more than half the game. That is when I shut it off. I wish I didn't because right after I shut the game off, both teams started to pile up the score, but the Bruins were able to hold their lead and went home 5-3. to three. I'm excited to see how this season goes. And man, the hockey talk was longer than I thought it would be. Let's send it to Elaine for Monday Matters after this short commercial break. Shop local at Lynx Clothing and Shoes. Lynx offers a wide variety of clothing. Looking for a nice outfit for the night? Lynx has it. Need a nice pair of shoes to go with it? Lynx has it. Lynx doesn't just offer nice clothes, though. They also provide all your local sports team gear. Shop for Salem, Eastern, or West Washington merchandise. Is your child missing any sports gear for his or her game? Lynx has it. With the wide selection and stylish and comfortable clothing and shoes, all your sports gear and equipment needs, along with the reasonable prices and a central location in the heart of downtown Salem, Indiana, there is no reason you shouldn't stop by and shop at Lynx Clothing and Shoes. Thanks, Brandon, for the long sports minute from the Hoosier Upland Sports Desk. Now let's talk about culture and this Monday Matters. It happens from time to time we hurt others, we offend others, we bother others in some way. Sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's not. None of us are perfect, but we do have the perfect opportunity to manage these human moments that creates understanding and connection. When we remind ourselves that our words and actions can have an impact on others and their words and actions can have an impact on us, we make a choice to do something ab about righting our wrongs. This week we are going to learn about how we can take ownership for the times we have hurt or wronged someone, including ourselves. Let's face it, our relationships matter, and learning how to be accountable for our words and actions, as well as in accepting someone else, someone's apology, contributes to creating a culture of compassion, understanding, empathy, and care. And that's the kind of culture that matters. Now, let's head back over to the anchors. Thanks, Elaine, for that Monday Matters. Well, I'm seeing the end of the show is near. That's right, Kendall. Thank you for tuning in to the Salem Show from our Washington County Community Foundation Studios. Wait, wait, wait. What? We have a breaking video. Let's go to it right now. Where we get that video from? Well, it's a video that the head writer shot on location from Fall Break in Gatlinburg last week. That seems a tad bit close. Nah, the camera zoom features are, ama are amazing. Yeah, right. No bear or person was harmed in the shooting of this video. Just remember everyone, if you see a bear, back away at least 50 yards. Now can we end the show? Yes, we can. That concludes. Wait. What now? Nothing. Just wanted to see if you'd stop. Funny. So, this will conclude our tremendous third episode of this semester. As the show winds down, we would like to remind everyone watching to like and subscribe to our account and streaming channels. Also, don't forget to check out our other social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. On these apps, you can view an array of videos and updates about our Salem Lions News Network. We'll see you next time and have a great gold blooded week, Lions. It's the end of the semester? It is. I think it is.
Gold blooded boot. Okay. We're showing. A gold blooded week. 